Our next guest, George Lockhart, has worked with the likes of Daniel Cormier and Max Holloway and Khabib Nurmagomedov and, of course, the great Conor McGregor. His, uh, his roster of clients is a who's who. And again, he had a great 2017. Wanted to check in with him as we begin 2018. He is kind enough to be joining us right now on the phone. George, are you there? Yes, sir. How you doing? A very recognizable uh, voice that George has. One of the. <laughs> have you always had that kind of voice, George? Uh, man, it was always deep, but I, I really got it. I was a, a combat instructor uh, for the the Marine Corps. My last four years, all I did was scream. I think I, uh, I think I jacked up that voice box a little bit. Wow! Does it hurt when you speak? <laughs> no, it, it, it doesn't. And it's funny because I uh, I don't really uh, notice it until I actually listen to one of your interviews. And um, I love to read all the comments because that's I'll I'll, I'll think I'm like, oh man, I spit some awesome information and then it, all the comments are like man it sounds like he eats gravel like <laughs> breakfast and, and they're, they're hilarious so but uh yeah no man I, I don't even notice it anymore okay so so i said at the top um 2017 was a great year for you and your team daniel lee tyler minton i mean uh the, the 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 people not only in the in the fight world uh the the likes of demi lovato you guys are working with everyone e- even even regular folks you're working with would you agree that it kind of felt like you guys turned the corner, like you you really dominated the space in 2017? Is that is that a fair assessment? I uh, I believe so. You know, it's always been kind of our goal to, uh, you know, we we wanted the celebrities, we wanted the average Joe, and we we wanted the uh, we actually wanted the UFC. Like you know, we want we want the entire roster. It's been a goal. You know, chances are of us to get every single person uh, might not happen, but you know that it's looking really good right now. You know, things are uh, really looking good for this upcoming year. So what do you mean the entire roster? Like you want to be in business with the UFC to take care of all of the fighters? Like how, how could you possibly do that otherwise? Well, so initially we, we, uh, we tried, but there's, there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of, uh, legalities that you have to worry about. If, if, uh, the UFC, they hire me to work with everybody, or hires the team to work with everybody. Um, and, and let's say, you know, something goes wrong. Um, then basically they're, they're up crap Creek without a paddle. So at the end of the day, um, it's more just like I contract with all the fighters. And the funny thing is we haven't done any advertising. We haven't, you know, everything's been word of mouth. You know, we don't put into anything into advertising. And, and, uh, like you said, like our roster right now, we have over a hundred UFC fighters, you know, in this, we have obviously have Ken, uh, Cormier coming up. Um, we got Max Holloway coming up again, I believe. Um, and we just, he just got done fighting for the, the title. We have just about every champion that you can, um, that you can think of. But we also have a lot of guys that are that are, that are coming up. You know, I think a lot of people need to they worry about just the top dogs. You know, we we worry about you know the amateur all the way up and, and a couple of guys. You know, we uh, I remember like like Dustin Poirier, we were with him his, his very first fight in the UFC. You know, and now you see how how far he's gone. Um, Cody No Love, and we uh, worked with him, and and then obviously you know he's champion. He was champion, and everything else. So um, it's something that we wanted to do, but also. We want to work with the average Joe. We actually, it's funny. I don't want to sound you know, arrogant or anything, but we're kind of like the only show in town right now, you know, and um, we've been really holding off and everybody's been telling us about like, okay, you know, let's, let's hear about the system, you know, and I've never been one to shy away from it, but giving out the entire system, you know, it's been, we've been kind of hesitant on it. You know, we didn't want anybody to take it and then kind of manipulate it and say it was their own. So we actually just came out with a, a DVD series that we're launching and uh, it literally is going to give away the entire system from weight cutting, general nutrition, uh, weight loss, performance enhancement, and everything. So I'm wow. hoping this year that you know, people are going to love that. You know, it's, it's been it's basically our life work. My, uh, mine, Lee's, you know, like you said, the team is awesome. We have Ian Larios, Tyler Menton has been kicking butt. So, and we're honestly, man, we need a lot more people. We're looking, we're looking for people to, to fill all these gaps because we just don't have enough. So when does the uh, the DVD series come out? We're looking at we're looking at about a month. Basically, all the uh, all the editing's done. Everything's everything's finished. We're actually uh, making a cookbook. Um, all the guys that work with us, um, they they've all put in you know basically the recipes. Like Tyler when he was working with Max, uh, Ian when he was working with Robbie Lawler. Um, obviously me with Connor and then, uh, you know, Lee's working with, uh, Demi Lovato right now. So, uh, we're all putting these recipes together and then, uh, you know, so people get like a cookbook. They understand like, okay, this is what these, and I think it'd be cool to, to kind of see what the fighters are actually eating, you know, and it doesn't have to taste horrible. 
So when you say system, like what do you mean by system? It's more than just you know some recipes and and filing some guy like like maybe you don't want to give it all away here. You want people to go out and, and get the DVD, and I respect that. But can you elaborate on on what that term means? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, like I said, I've never shy away from it. I want I want to get it out. Like I'm that guy that I start talking about nutrition. Um, I gotta look around the room because you ever had that guy that. Uh, <laughs> He, uh, he loves his job, but nobody else loves his job. <laughs> and they're all like nodding their head. So, like I said, I, I love talking about nutrition and, um, you know, I'd love to tell more and more about it, but like with, in terms of like a, like a system, like, um, a lot of people, it's kind of like, you know, eat organic food or eat vegetables, eat fruits, uh, eat lean meat. And it's kind of like, well, well, no, duh. you know what I mean? Like that's, that's not really a system. Like I can open any muscle magazine and, and basically there it is. There's like a step-by-step mathematical equation. Like, okay, if I weigh this much and I have this much body fat and I'm doing this activity, what what should I be eating? How much should I be eating? And, and when should I be eating it? Um, you know, like one one instance, and we, we, we talked a lot about this, this guy, uh, Drew Dober, um, he was 185 pounds showing up on Tuesday uh, for his, uh, his last UFC fight. And, uh, you know, UFC calls, he calls me like, man, dude, how is he going to make this? And he had to make 155 by Friday and he made 155 and he's like, man, it's the, it's the best cut of my life. And the reason being is because of that system, you have to understand that how much, how much glycogen does this guy hold? How much water is attached to that glycogen? How do you reload the body? Um, based on the amount of sodium that his body's dropping, based on the amount of potassium, he, he, based on the amount of sodium he has, is going to tell me exactly how much potassium that we need to put back in the system as well. But it, this will tell you everything. You know, you know, it'll, it'll help you out a lot, help people out a lot too, to, to let them know like it is a mathematical equation. So if they're like, man, I want to drop down to this weight, um, they'll be like, they'll realize like, man, I, I, I can't actually do that, or I don't have enough time or I need, you know, I need more time or it's just not feasible based on my frame. Cause I mean, you can lose body fat, but you can't, you can't lose, you know, you can't lose bone and stuff like that. And that's, that's something that we're facing with drew the kid. I mean, you've seen him, you know, he's shredded and, um, just real quick, like, like, you know, not to bore everybody, but like drew, he, you know, if he's at 185, he fights at 155. Let's just say to, to keep numbers easy, He's ten percent body fat. That's fifteen pounds minus from one fifty five. You know, you're looking at about well, one one forty, and forty percent of your body is lean muscle tissue. So you're looking at about sixty pounds, sixty five pounds of lean muscle tissue. Well, he's been instructed to lose about ten pounds of muscle. Now, when you when you break it down, like when people say like, oh, you know, like my body fat's at ten percent, you know, they think the rest of the the body's muscle, but it's not. Only forty percent of that is actual lean muscle tissue. So if he's at 65 pounds of lean muscle tissue and you're going to lose 10 pounds, you understand that, 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 that you're a whole new fighter after that. Like what makes Drew Dober, Drew Dober can change from that. You know what I'm saying? From losing that. And I think that, um, some people, it, it's just, uh, this is a totally different type of science and different type of uh, nutrition than, than, than it's being taught at like the ACE and the ISSA, the, it's more for the general, you know, general public, you know what I'm saying? Versus you got an extreme athlete, you got, you got a weight, uh, a weight based, um, sport where these guys have to make weight and then they have 24 hours to replenish themselves. It, it, it's a, it's a new thing. And I think that's why we, we basically own this, um, arena is because we, we've sought out and we've, we've done it not only in the general public, but also in the military, both myself and Lee. And so you weren't working with Drew Dober. They called you, the UFC called you and asked you to help him. No, we, I was working with Drew Dober. We actually had one of our other guys. We had a guy named uh, Rich Farrell. He was out there. Uh, I think we also had Tyler Mitten was out there with, uh, okay. with someone else. And then, they were just wondering what your plan was, like how you were going to get this done. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it, it's, uh, it's hard because some people, they're going to have troubles getting, you know, licensed. And, and I, I believe, you know, and it sucks. And, and like UFC is kicking butt in, in terms of, of what they're doing and trying, you know, in terms of improving safety of fighters in terms of the, the, the weight cuts and things like that. But in, in a lot of circumstances, I see that like sometimes they'll pull a number, like you can't lose 10% of the, the weight. And it's just like, you know, where do these numbers come from? Mm-hmm. Because if I have somebody that's, if I have somebody that's 30% body fat and I got a guy that's like 5% body fat, the numbers are going to be way different because fat's basically hydrophobic. It doesn't attach to water and muscle is 70% water. 
So you kind of see how, it, it, and you know, it'd be nice. Like uh, what we want to do, the reason we want to be a part of the entire UFC is that we can say, Hey man, look, this is what your body fat percentage is. Like there's no way, there's no amount of sauna time that's going to get that weight down. <laughs> there's no, there's not that much, there's not that much water in you. And when you're in the sauna, it's not like it's burning fat. Um, and vice versa, like breaking it down. So this is this is a, a numbers game, and and that's what the you know that's what the DVD show you. It's like it, it is a system. It's not just you know uh, eat healthy, eat clean. By the way, why come out with this now? Um, and then you can have competitors who will try to take this, modify it, steal whatever the case may be. Why why give it out? Well, like I said, we are basically the only game in town. And the thing is, our team that we have, you know, we, we've been training them up and, and working with, like Tyler Minton, he's, uh, he's been kicking butt taking names. You know, he's, uh, we work with him. Uh, I think the first fight we had him with was, uh, it was like Pro Gonzalez, Miles Jury. Um, he had four, I think, we had, I think we had four people on that card. We kind of threw him under the bus. Um, Chris Wyman, uh, right? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Cause live it, 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 they all kind of mesh together now, but yeah, it's um, like I said, we have, we have tons and tons of guys. We have these people that it's like, you have to train them up. And, and the thing about it is I always, I always say this area, like people are like, wow, man, you always talk about, you know, you just give it out there. You know, you, you just kind of just tell all the knowledge out there. And I say, you know, it's kind of like a black belt in jujitsu. If I, you know, if somebody talks to a black belt in jujitsu all day and that black belt teaches them stuff all day long, um, by the end of the day, they're not going to be a black belt. And if I don't tell you stuff, it's probably because I don't, I don't actually have that much knowledge in the first place. You know what I mean? If I can get it all out in a day or in, in one interview or, you know what I'm saying, with the, with the DVD series, it's going to give you the system. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of things that, you know, we have to, as, as um, you know, as a team, we have like signs like, okay, this, uh, his blood pressure is dropping too fast. Or, you know, there, you know, we have like bar receptors or, or, you know, this, this and that, you know, there's a chance that he, he might fade. And that's why having us there is, is, is the best thing, but not everybody can afford that. You know, we put as much as we can into this, but it, it's still not the same as having like that jujitsu coach there with you. It's kind of like you got the DVD of the jujitsu is the system. You can use it, you can apply it, but it's still not the same as having us out there. So you say that you believe that you're the only game in town. I mean, we know of, of, of others from, from Dolce Diet to perfecting athletes. Why do you feel like now you're the, the, the last group standing? I, I don't, I mean, I, like, again, I don't want to sound arrogant, but I don't know who any of them have right now. I mean, like I said, we have over a hundred people on the roster. I, I don't know uh, who Dolce is working. I'm not honest. I, I don't know who he's working with. And I don't, I mean, he might be, yeah. I don't even know if he's in MMA anymore. I think he might have moved on to, to other things. I'm not sure. Um, and, you know, perfecting athletes, I, I'm not sure how many people that they have on their roster right now. Uh, I, I, um, yeah, and I mean, I mean, maybe there's other people that have a few clients, but I wouldn't necessarily call that um, our competitors. You know, they're not okay. doing the same things that we're doing. It's it's an interesting game and it's a competitive one. Do you feel pressure like every time? Because I've always felt like, okay, so this is, you are paid, you are there to try to help these guys make weight and be at their best come fight time. And there's a fight before the fight. Do you feel that pressure, you know, way in morning? Like, because if some guy or or, 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 or woman misses weight wildly, that, that it, it often will fall on your shoulders. You failed them, all this stuff and more. Or, or now are you guys such a well-oiled machine where you don't lose sleep over there? Like, oh yeah, we got Khabib coming up. Easy. Tyler's there. He's doing his thing. Oh yeah, we got, you know, Cormier or Connor, whatever the case may be. Do you, do you feel that pressure still? Because it is your name attached to it. You're sort of the face of the company. You're the figurehead, all that and more. Um, what's it like? Because I, I feel like there's so much pressure on you. You guys aren't the ones cutting weight, but you have to help the guy cut weight. And if they fail, a lot of that blame falls on your shoulders. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Like, um, I'm uh, stressed out. But over the years, you know, this kind of taking a look. I remember uh, first time that I worked with Poirier. It was with uh, Poirier, and uh, it wasn't the first time I worked with Poirier, but it was Poirier and Flo uh, Kenny Florian. Um, they were both on the same card, and and Kenny had started off at about 187, and he was going down to 145. And um, man, it was a huge cut, and I, I wasn't mobile at the time. I was still in the Marine Corps. So I would just kind of tell them, you know, via, you know, text message, email stuff. Okay. This is what you need to be doing. This is what you need to be doing. And everything was going great, you know, but like when you're not there and you can't visually see things, it's, it's, it's nerve wracking, but both are like, I get a call 
from uh, Katie's camp, be like, hey, man, he, he's not sweating, you know? And then uh, get a call from Poirier's camp. Like, I, I kid you not, like 20 minutes later, like, he's not sweating. Hmm. And um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting there like, I'm about to have a freaking panic attack. I'm like, this is, um, yep, just started this out. Like, I mean, I was still in the Marine Corps. And like, it's, it's a constantly evolving thing. You know, there's so much that we've learned and, and, and improved on. But, you know, at the same at the end of the day, man, like these people are putting their trust in you, not only with the, their career, but with their health. Um, so when, when that when that comes down the pipe, you, you're damn right, you, you're stressed out. But the thing is, now I feel so confident, Ariel. Like we've, we've talked to doctors, like there's a Dr. Ken effect that we, we, we talked to um, about our hydration, our, our rehydration system and our protocols. And uh, this guy's been doing oral rehydration for 30 years. And that's what he does. He does. He's in the, he's in the army. And I mean, like when we were talking to him, he was doing a, basically a, an abstract of soldiers at 30, like 30,000 feet. Like what happens to them, how to rehydrate them. You know, and that's all he does. And we told him about the rehydration system. He's like, dude, a hundred percent like this, this, and this. And it was, you know, he would ask us questions on certain things, obviously because, you know, he's not in the, he, he wasn't just part of the fight game, but he answered a lot of our stuff. And he, the cool thing is when, when somebody like that is like, you guys are right on point. Um, that gives you that confidence. Like, okay, I did everything you know, that I could possibly do. And um, if we just keep the, the fighter safety, if you like, man, honestly, at the end of the day, Ariel, like fighter safety is number one. And I, I keep that in my head. Like, look, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to make this. A, but at the end of the day, he was safe. He might hate me because he missed weight or, or, or she missed weight or whatever, but they were safe. And at, at that point, I mean, I can, I can lay my head down at night and, and be like, okay, you know what? They they were safe. Um, uh, you know, and, and, um, you know, that's, that's, it keeps me on my toes. It keeps the team on our toes. Like we're constantly learning. Um, but it's a rabbit hole, man. I'm telling you, like when it comes to nutrition, you talk about, you know, the cells and to like, you know, like the potassium's not permeable. It needs two molecules of sodium. To be, you know what? Like you, you just, you just, it just, the more you read, the more you like, wow, the more I know, I don't know. But in terms of weight cutting, I feel that we've, we've gone to, uh, to, to places that nobody else has been. And, and, um, I think we have the best system. I think we might have the only system quote unquote system. Um, and, and in the hydration as well. Do you feel like I, I have felt there have been a couple of times and we'll talk UFC only cause they're the ones who will receive all the attention where it, it's looked a little dicey that maybe someone shouldn't, you know, fight or they don't make weight. They don't show up to the scale. You know, all the stories. And sometimes I fear like, you know, we're, we're one mistake away from uh, something truly tragic happening. Do you feel like all the right things are being done? Um, like you can, you can confidently say as, as far as the people you're working with, all the right things are being done to make sure that everyone's doing this the right way. Or um, do, you, do you worry about those same things as well? That, you know, someone who may not afford, um, you know, a nutritionist who can't afford it, who, who doesn't want to do it, who thinks they could do it on their own that, and, and then that happens and there's a, there's a tragedy that happens. And then, you know, it, it, there's a trickle down effect and it could change a lot in the sport. How do you feel about the way, you know, weight cutting is, is being treated from the promotion, uh, point of view and also the fighter point of view in 2018? Man, I, I mean, from uh, from the UFC's point of view, I mean, like having Jeff Novinsky there. I mean, I, honestly, when when he showed up, I was I was a little nervous. I was like, oh man, you know, I've, I've heard stories, you know, and um, man, the one thing I think everybody will agree with, every fighter, everybody will talk about, is, is that he has the fighter's best interest at heart. You know, everything that that they that they do is to improve the safety of the fighters, um, which I love, and, and I think the way that they went about it is is they, they put a couple mandates on things and, and it's really opened up the eyes to fighters. Like you know, they, they, they go out and they get more educated on the nutrition. Whereas before they're just kind of like, okay, I just stopped eating. I put on sweats and this is, this is how we cut weight. Whereas now that's, that's not necessarily the case. And then people are starting to realize it's a huge part of the game. Um, I'm always, I'm always nervous about that because there's, there's uh when I say numbers don't lie, it's like the numbers don't lie, Ariel, but, but people do. You know, we've, uh, it's, it's, it's hard because like you'll work with somebody and it's like, you know, like, uh, they went to bed at 185 and then they wake up at 190. Right. Um, me, you know, it, it's, it's literally scientifically impossible for you to gain weight while you sleep. It's literally impossible. You see what I'm saying? Um, so what we have to do is kind of put that error, like that human error. Like sometimes the scale that they're using doesn't give the same reading. Sometimes you get on scale. Like we have to tell them like, Hey, you need to, you need to weigh yourself three times on that scale, move that scale left and right 
to get a correct reading. Because a lot of times when you step on a scale for the very first time, it gives you an incorrect reading. And simple things like that, you know, that, that, you know, like one, one incorrect reading on a scale and anybody that's, that's been on scales or like any fighter will tell you that this happens all the freaking time. Um, the amount of water that they're drinking. If I have an individual that's got to lose 10 pounds or cut 10 pounds in a week and they're drinking half a gallon of water for the last two weeks, that cut is going to be very difficult. It's going to be extremely difficult because the body's in a point where it's trying to hold on to water. It's not going to just release it. Whereas I have somebody that's drinking a gallon and a half of water, um, but more than they actually have to cut, it's, it's going to be a lot easier. So I can't just look at, okay, well, how much, uh, how much do they have to cut? You know what I'm saying? Like there's a lot of variables and with our team, like we, we take all those variables out. And when we're there, it's like, basically we walk, we show up. It's like, here's the water, drink this, eat this. We bring it to them every three hours. This is when they work out. This is what you take. You know, everything's, everything's basically, um, you know, we, we make sure that third party certified. And that's another problem that we we're starting to realize that, um, yeah, you know, there's a lot of a lot of things coming about these peanut supplements. You know, um, Lockhart and Leith, we're, we're we're actually in the works of, of you know a little bit like working on the supplement side of the house to to make sure that this doesn't happen. Make sure that everything is third party certified. We work with a lot of fighters to to uh, to to come up with a, an actual kit that that people can just be like, okay, but I guarantee, like this is not you won't pop on anything. This is what you need for a fight. This is what you need for a fight camp. Um, in terms of performance, the safety, endurance, and then I well, actually have a weight cut kit. Like we have kits now that we send out to people because, like you said, not everybody can afford us. But man, we got mobile coaching. We have mobile coaching. We have kits that we send out to people. We'll literally send people a kit. It'll just show up, and and all all they have to do is open that kit. They'll have their sauna suit. They'll have the supplementation. They'll have a mobile coaching that people tell them exactly what is what you need to be doing today. Um. No. So, I mean, we're trying, we're trying to get that out. We're trying to get it out as much as possible, man. But it's still like, we still get shocked, man. Like on all levels, like, I can't believe you're doing this. And you know, it's cool on the amateur level. I'm starting to, I've talked to a couple of amateurs that on the phone with, with fitness VT and, uh, and I'm like blown away by how much knowledge they have. So, you know, it's, uh, it, things are changing and it's not as, as I guess primitive as it was when I, when I first started out. Uh, last thing, how do you feel about the early weigh-ins now? Almost two years in, how do you feel about them? You like them? Yeah, man. I think the more the more time people have to hydrate, the the better. Even though I think it's uh, kind of uh, counteract. Like some people are having a negative effect just because um, before they were, it was uh, because of the lateness of the the weigh-ins. It was kind of preventing them from overeating. And I think some people are uh, they're kind of packing it on a little bit too much because they have all this time to eat and uh, they're kind of going overboard. You know, we kind of prevent that with our, with our fighters, but, uh, you know, in terms of, in terms of health, man, the fact that they have more time to hydrate is, is amazing. It's awesome. Well, big year for you in 20. Oh, by the way, do you get the call yet for Connor? You get, you get, were you, we getting back into camp? What's going on? What can you tell us, George? <laughs> tell me something. <laughs> Uh, no call, no call. No call hey, yet. Hey, if, if I if I was gonna put my money on on him, like a lot of people, are like you think he's gonna be back? And I'm like, yeah, hundred percent. That guy is. A, I mean, he's a fighter. You know, um, I think he, he enjoyed boxing. If he was a nice little break, but I mean, the guy's a fighter, so he, I, I'm I'm sure we'll see him soon. March, April, May. What can you tell us? <laughs> I haven't got a clue, man. All right, I haven't got a clue. <laughs> Well, that was one of the big things you did in, in 2017, Mayweather McGregor. Um, your, your, your client list is, is incredible right now. Who's who sounds like you have some big things coming up in 2018. Good luck with the release of the DVDs. Keep up the great work. And it's good to have you back. I know you took a bit of a break. You were working, um, you know, with, with, with just a, a, a regular civilian, did some great things with her up in Northern California, but it's good to have you back on the MMA side of things as well. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. Congrats on all your success. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, George. Hey, thank you. All right, there he is.